So he, here's what I've felt as far as her in cold weather. My first dog loved cold weather. Didn't matter. It could be negative 10. Right. She'd do it. Um, Izzy, my one I've got now, has always hated the ice, always hated the cold. But I can get her to do it, but she literally does not like it at all. Um, but my, my theory with her is she's an indoor dog. Mm-hmm. I don't even have a fenced in backyard, but I've got a porch in the back. So sure. as the weather's dropping throughout the fall, my plan in, th- in theory is just to leave her outside pretty much all day. And from the time I go to work to kind of come back and then bring her inside after that. And, and my, my thinking has always been that that would be enough to hunt her down to about five, 10 degrees. Um, sure. is kind of my thing. So I guess my question is a little bit more in depth on what you have to do to acclimate a dog to um, be prepared to hunt in the cold and I know you said every dog's different, but so let's just say specifically mine. And, and what are the holes in my thinking as far as how I'm getting my dog's coat ready? And sure. what are your thoughts about my temperature range for her of five to 10 degrees if I acclimate her that way? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, you're going to have two, two things that you're working uh, with, two variables. Uh, the first one, you, you've really got a good idea, and that's just acclimating a dog to the temperature um, making sure that they have their undercoat developed because usually they'll blow their coat once a year. And if they don't have a reason to grow an undercoat, it won't grow in right. It'll just have a very thin coat. Um, leaving a dog outside, you know, in a safe environment, supervised or, or kenneled, uh, where they can acclimate to the cold usually is the best way to do it. I would definitely do it gradually. Mm-hmm. I would try to train your dog in the water uh, when the water is 60 degrees and then 50 and then 40 and just work in so that, mm-hmm. that it's not like, Hey, we trained when it was 60 and now we're getting out here and it's, you know, it's 32 and there's ice floating around in it. You know, you don't want to make that jump. Um, you want to just keep working in the water as their coat gets thicker, which if you hunt a lot should be like, we start teal season in the seventies and eighties. Sure. So yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. So, but the second part is where you're going to run into an issue. And that is the a dog's ability to handle cold temperatures is largely tied to the dog's drive. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of dogs that have low drive just don't want to cut it when it comes to really cold. And, and although you can help and you can help them to have a better coat, you can help to encourage them. uh, You can help that drive along in that way. You're not going to be able, that dog's never going to be just one that smashes it in the cold typically because of the drive. So whereas your other dog that you've got two things you've got in the dog's mind, I want to be comfortable. And then I really want to go get this, whatever it is I'm going to get a bumper or a a bird. And if this is really high, this doesn't matter so much, but if this is really low, then I really just want to be comfortable. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and sure, you can force fetch a dog all you want and do all that stuff. That's fine, but it's not, you know, you then you're going to have a dog that's still going to go in the water, but that is not going to make them go faster. Yeah. So it's not a force fetch isn't a drive building mechanism at all. Um, it's just a common misconception with, with what you do with force fetch. So, um, yeah, I, I would encourage you to do what you're planning on doing, but I wouldn't, I just encourage you to be careful with what you expect because increasing a dog's drive, you, you can always build a better fence around a dog that has high drive, but you can, you can rarely put drive into a dog. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you kind of, you kind of have what you have when it comes to the drive level, which is by and large to retrieve something in the cold, but there has been a few times which I have to coax her to do it. Right. Right. Um, right. I I mean, I know her body language. I can literally tell what she's thinking (laughs) like every second. I feel like, and so I just know she's miserable. I know she doesn't care for it, but if I'm there, and I ask her to do it. She's going to be willing to try, but sure. it's just a matter of her looking at me like, <laughs> you know. Well, hey, as a dog to. trainer, if you're if you're able to read a dog's body language, then you're already you know pretty pretty far ahead from most people, you know. So we we teach that in our program, and boy, you'd be surprised at people that just, just ignore their you know our, your dog's always talking back to you. They're just not using words, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. Boom, it's it's definitely helpful in training them. So before we switch topics off of ice, I want to tell you a story you might find interesting about her. So her first year, um, clear up until the freeze, we had been hunting like ankle deep water. Literally, she had never had to swim for an actual retrieve. And I had trained her in deep water and everything. But as far as actual hunting, she had never had to swim for a retrieve. Everything we had done in October and November was all shallow water. 
So mm -hmm. we got a frozen, a freeze in December, like a, a hard freeze. So we moved over to the Kansas River and the water there was was over her head. So we drop a bird right out in the hole. And Izzy goes to the to the to the ice or goes to the edge. She's standing on the ice and she's looking at it and she's unsure. Mm -hmm. And I think in her mind, she still thought it was going to be shallow because when she went in, I mean, she went completely submerged oh, all yeah. the way under yeah. And she yeah. immediately was just like, I mean, you could just see she was panicking. And so she turned around, came out, and she didn't retrieve that bird. And the rest of the day, she was miserable. And about an hour later, we, we had taken a boat on the river. About an hour later, she was just like, I'm done. And she ran back to the boat like a couple hundred yards and just sat there looking at me. And my theory <laughs> with the ice, uh, you've dispelled it a little bit. But one of my theories as to why she doesn't like ice as much is that was her first experience where she's submerged and yeah. didn't expect it. That could be. A lot of times they associate things like that. And uh, so a huge part of our, our Cornerstone's puppy training program is socialization. And a lot of people think socialization is just allowing a dog to experience a whole lot of things. But the, the most important part of socialization is doing what you can do as a dog owner to ensure that all of those experiences are positive. And so I tell my our people, hey, your dog needs to meet 100 new people in the first 100 days of, of being with you. And they need to go to 50 new places in the first 100 days. And every time they do that, it needs to be the best thing ever. So if you have a dog that's a little shy of people and people are like, hey, can I pet your dog? You know, I say, hey, sure. Here's about four or five pieces of food from my dog's you know, morning breakfast that I didn't give him. Hey, when you come to pet my dog, just give him a little bit of that food. Oh,